Word and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. Today we are going to talk about CloudWatch alarms. Distributed applications are famous on how hard they are to monitor and observe. For me, sometimes I think about distributed applications like herding cats, you know, they just go wherever and you it's kind of hard to know what they're doing. It's very hard to put everything in a dashboard and look at it when you have a lot of microservices and asynchronous operations and things doing their own thing with queues and event passes and things like that. And the more traffic you get, the more complicated it becomes. So alarms are fundamental to know how your application is doing. Alarms allows you to monitor your applications automatically, so you don't need to be all the time looking at 27 dashboards to know how your application is doing and if something went out of control. Most of AWS services produce out-of-the-box metrics that help you to understand how the service is doing. This is great for any kind of services, but more when we talk about managed services like Dynamo, API Gateway, Event Bridge, Lambda. They provide all this insightful information about things that went well and things that didn't go that well. So for example, when you're using API Gateway, one of the metrics that comes out of the box is the amount of 500 errors that API Gateway is returning. 500 errors are uh, the statute code 500. So when your API Gateway is returning a 500, it means that something in your backend might not be right. Usually a 500 means I screwed up meaning the server screwed up. So you want to know when that happens. Sometimes it can be one isolated case or sometimes it can be happening due to some third party API not working or who knows, something <laughs> got out of control. So how we know that something is wrong? Do we look at the dashboards all the time, 24 seven? We pay someone to just be looking at dashboards and telling us uh, our 500 errors are up. Or is it better to get notified when something goes wrong? This is where alarms come to play, to get that notification when something goes wrong. So CloudWatch is the native monitoring and observability tool that AWS offers. And it comes with a lot of features. Uh, when I started with serverless, CloudWatch was starting out in a way of, of providing a lot of metrics and observability tools. But now, after year over year, they keep on adding more and more functionality to make it a great service to work with. So using CloudWatch, you can see your metrics, your logs, your alarms, and other interesting things that CloudWatch provides that I'm not going to cover in this video. So let's talk about what are CloudWatch alarms. CloudWatch alarms basically are looking at a metric and let you create an action when that metric goes out of control. You can create alarms that are specified by you, that you say, well, if I get 500 errors in my API gateway, then uh, notify me my email. Or you can create alarms that do something for you, like uh, has some automation. So if my CPU increase, use the auto scaling to improve, add more machines. Or then you can have alarms that are composite alarms that basically are aggregating different uh, alarms. So you might get a 500 error in your API gateway plus some error in your Lambda function. And instead of sending two alarms, you will send one that is the kind of conjunction of both of them. So that's a composite alarm. And then we have anomaly detections alarms. These are alarms that are using machine learning in order to get triggered. So these are great if you have, uh, for example, an e-commerce site. In your e-commerce site, you have traffic uh, usually quite low from Monday to Friday, but on the weekends, people tend to buy a lot, imagine you're selling games. So anomaly detection will know and understand the metrics of your system based on your traffic. And if something goes out of control, it will send you a alarm. And this is something you can configure. You can configure the threshold in which uh, this anomaly detection is happening and all that. I will not do a video now on anomaly detection, but if that's something you want to know more, let me know in the comment box below and I make 
a more in-depth video on anomaly detection. But let's talk about simple alarms, alarms on a specific metric. And if you want to know more, just let me know about what you want to know and go in-depth more. So I want to show you a demo on how you can create an alarm for a service uh, and how it goes using AWS SAM. Basically, this demo is using CloudFormation at the end of the day because this is not a short hat syntax that SAM provides, but I'm embedding these alarms into uh, some templates. So this is something you can uh, get started. So as always, before going go into the code, hit that like button, it's free and you will make me very happy. Let's go now to this demo. Is this demo I'm going to use code I created for the event bridge series, but this is not something you need to go and look for. You can implement the same alarms in any kind of demo you have around. I just wanted to add uh, one more level of complexity to that demo. So you have a more full fledged realistic event bridge demo, but this can apply to a Lambda function to, it can be an alarm or something that work well. It's alarm on a metric. So CloudWatch doesn't care <laughs> if it's a positive metric or is a negative metric. In this demo, I'm going to trigger an alarm when a message goes to the dead queue letter. And this is kind of a negative alarm. We don't want things to go in the dead queue letter and we want to get notified when that happens. But again, you can do this on the amount of times a user click, a custom metric. Do you want to know how to do custom metrics? Let me know. Um, on, I don't know, a Lambda normal metric. You can do this in any, any, any metric. So I just using that as an example. If you want to follow along, I recommend you to look the event reach series so you know how I build every step of the way. So now let's go to the console and see what I'm doing. So this is the demo I'm going to use, the initial code, you can find it in the SAM event bridge uh, branch called video free. And I will upload this uh, code as video four. So there you will find the uh, beginning and the end of this demo. So clone that repo and then you can, uh, you need to deploy that order manager to get an URL so you can test. No need to do this. This is me just showing you how to set up, but if you want to do it from start, go and check the previous video. We are focusing on the project Blue Dragon, and this is a simple uh, rule for event bridge that is calling a third party API. This is something very easy to make to fail. So that's what I'm going to do that. And in there we have an API destination and we have a rule uh, attached to event bridge that involves this API destination. And with that destination fail, a message will be put in the dead queue letter and then it will trigger a Lambda function. So it's doing a lot of things. So that's what I'm saying. This is just a demo to show you the alarms, focus on that and not the rest, unless you want. So the first thing we are going to do when we are setting the alarms, this is an alarm that will trigger when a message goes to the dead queue letter and we want to send an email. So I'm going to add a new parameter that you can put your email address that you want to uh, configure this for. So that's the first step. And then I'm going to create an alarm topic. Uh, we want to use SNS service to define that. SNS is the simple notification service and allows you to send emails when something happens, when a message is received into that notification service. And we can create a topic and add uh, our email as a subscription to that topic. So basically when a message comes to the topic in SNS, you receive an email and you can have as many emails registered there as you want. Then we are going to create a CloudWatch alarm and these basically 10 lines of code are the ones that are creating the alarm for us. Um, it's a CloudWatch alarm, so that's the type. Then we can put a description. I recommend you to put a description because that will be visible in the console and that also will be visible in the email that you are getting when this alarm happens. Then you have to pick the namespace in this case is event bridge. So that's why AWS events, I leave you a list of all the namespaces 
uh, in the comment box below. So you can find if you are doing this for API Gateway or Lambda or whatever, you can find the namespace there because you need that. And then when you have the namespace, you can find the metric name and that's also in that same uh, link. For each of the namespaces, you will find all the available metrics because you need that metric name to put there. So basically, this will be an alarm on that particular metric in that namespace. Then the period is one minute. In this case, you can put any period you want. Uh, I just make it short so I get the alarms. So this is the time that the alarm is kind of uh, listening for. If you put it for 10 minutes, it will wait for 10 minutes to send an alarm. So when something happens for 10 minutes, and then you need to decide what kind of operation is an average, is a sum, it's uh, whatever, there are many available. So I just pick the sum. So if I get one message, it doesn't matter, but make sure that you pick the right one. Sometimes you need to play a little bit and, and understand your metric, what it means to average, what it means to sum and all that thing. Then we have data points to alarm and evaluation period. So here the data points to alarm is how many data points we are evaluating in that period of time. In this case is one in one minute. So that's what we are getting. If we are getting, uh, for example, in 10 minutes and we will allow uh, 10 data points, then we will analyze those 10 data points. And if they all trigger, then that's good. Then we have the threshold, that's the amount of data points that kind of have to go out of the threshold. And the comparison operator is depending, for example, in this case, the threshold is one. So if I have one event that um, then it's greater or bigger <laughs> or equal than the threshold. Uh, imagine that my threshold is at 10 and I have three of them, then the threshold is not reached, so the alarm is not triggered. And this is good uh, when you have cases, for example, the 500 error from API Gateway, sometimes a 100 error in a thousands of requests doesn't mean anything. So it doesn't make sense to trigger an alarm that creates noise. And you don't want that. You want to be very thoughtful on when you launch alarms. So the person that is receiving the email is kind of acting on. So I don't know in your culture, if you have this story about the... Um, shepherd that is calling wolf all the time. So this is the same. You don't want to call wolf all the time. You want to just say that there is a wolf when there is a wolf. I don't know if I'm saying the right word for wolf is, you know, this animal that does oh and it's ships. <laughs> so this shepherd is taking care of ships and he's calling wolf all the time. So then like nobody pays attention to him. So when the wolf come, it is the ships. And, and in this case is the same. You want to trigger an alarm when something that is worth to pay attention, uh, it's important. So then the operator can go and look at it and do something about it. If you trigger an alarm just for the sake of triggering an alarm, the operator will go the first two times and say, eh, nothing, and ignore it. So you want to make sure that this threshold is something you might need to go and reevaluate and play around until you find the right one. So don't think that you will get this right in the first go. And finally, we have the alarm actions, and this is what we want it to do. In this case, is to send an email with SNS, but you can do something else, and there is many alarm actions available. I'll leave you a link in the description box so you can find all the actions that are available. So now you deploy this, and basically, after this is deployed, we can go and see what happened. So I see you in the other side. Ah, before. Deploying. One thing, uh, I'm just deploying, but make sure that you put a valid email because we will need to confirm the subscription. So now let's go. So after this is deployed, now uh, we can make sure that everything is right or wrong. <laughs> because the first thing we want to do is to break the API destination that this thing is uh, doing. When you deploy this service, you have two options basically to deploy it with a valid uh, URL or with a wrong URL. If you're following the tutorial, you might have deployed with a valid URL. If you have a valid URL, you need to break it in order to have a message that is going to be sent to the that letter. So I just put a URL that doesn't work in there, so it's broken. And that's the first thing we want to do. The second thing we want to do is to make sure that we are confirming our description in the email address so we can receive mails from that topic. We need to configure that. And that happens every time we deploy a new uh, subscription to a topic. So that will happen. So then we can go to SNS and see that uh, the topic 
that we just created has a subscription and is confirmed. That's very important. If not, you are not going to receive the emails. Then we are going to send a new uh, request to this call event bridge Shaban. In your case, you want to do whatever you need to do in order to trigger a message. Just send um, a message. So then you can trigger the alarm that needs to trigger the alarm this message. This is what I'm doing. Good. Now we can go to, in our case, event bridge and find the name of the rule because we want to see the metrics. So I'm just looking at uh, the rule name and we can go to CloudWatch and analyze the metric. You can do this in whatever is your metric that you're analyzing, find the right uh, resource, and then you can look for the metric in uh, CloudWatch metrics. So we can see uh, there that, that there is a metric uh, register. So we can see that there are four different metrics there. Uh, there is the um, invocation set to that Q letter. That is the one that we are interested in. And I'm trying to see something in the screen there. <laughs> so zoom in. And you can see in the sum with a period of one minute, this is the same configuration that we have the alarm. There is one. So that's good. That means that the alarm should have triggered and it have did. We can see that there's something in alarm. And if we go to our email, we will see one email that has all this explanation of the alarm. So that's why I'm saying that the alarm description is important because you're going to see all the definition in here. So that's good. You can uh, also have a direct connection to the alarm. If you click in that um, link and it will open the alarm and you can see more information. So that's the video for today on CloudWatch alarms. Let me know if you want to know more about anomaly detection or composite alarms or things like that. I can make another video on that. The same for custom metrics. I'm happy to make a video on that as well. So I see you in the next episode of Uwa. Ciao, ciao.